two, one. Welcome back to the Comic Book Bullies with Nerd is a New Bully. I'm your host, Leroy. I'm a co-host. This is Eli. Oh, nicknames. Um, Your friendly neighborhood, Leroy. Uh, uh, spectacular Eli. <laughs> That'll work. <laughs> And yes, we're back with another episode. And like I said, anytime there's a big ten pole movie that comes out, a good one that we all like, fuck Dark Phoenix, but one that we actually both seen <laughs> decided to do, we decide to make the whole episode just about that. We don't clutter with a whole bunch of other bullshit. We just get right to the point. So this podcast is going to be specially made for just Spider Man Far From Home. It's going to be spoiler heavy. We're going to start off non spoiler just give you our quick review of just having you seen it. And after we give our quick review, we're going to go right into it, and that's it. Um, Eli, before we go into it, even though I know we normally just get right into the podcast and nothing else, it's so much bullshit that's going on right now. We just got to address stuff just a little bit. Just a little bit. Okay. Just, just touch a little bit and we move on. First off, I want because there's one thing that's been in the news that's been bothering me, and I think everybody's been seeing, and I want to address this first and foremost. Please, people... When you go to the grocery store, do not pull the ice cream out and lick it and put it back in the in the in the freezer. <laughs> that is disgusting. <laughs> and they are gonna throw you away in jail. I'm just letting you know that right now. They're locking that think that lady got locked up for twenty years. So yeah. Don't be a statistic. Yeah. Uh last thing I wanna mention is uh yeah, so like I said, for those that don't listen to the comic book police podcast, I do wanna let you know that this podcast is uh we don't ask you for a dime. It's completely free, so you can listen to it for free. It didn't cost you anything to do that. Uh, if we ever need money, don't worry. We will find Ryan Goma, who's a valiant listener and our boss. We will Google his address and kick his door in if we need money. But until yeah. then, in the meantime, uh, we found a new way to make money. So oh, yeah? we're going to put uh, in the link, Eli is going to start selling his bath water for $30. <laughs> So feel free to send a link to him, and we will mail that to you immediately. I do want to put a disclaimer up. If anything happens to you, you have to go to the hospital for that. No refunds. So. Yeah, I don't I don't think you should drink it, but do whatever else you want with it. <laughs> Boy, hot dog water with it. You know, whatever, whatever you think. <laughs> oh, shit. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Something else happened, Eli. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, Little Mermaid is black. That's what I hear. That's what I hear. So let me ask you a question. Okay. Do you give a shit about Little Mermaid? I really don't. <laughs> Me neither. <laughs> I never even seen the old one. I never seen the original. You never had a girlfriend that forced you to watch this shit? Ah, uh, did I have a girlfriend at that time? No, I was too young. I, yeah, I was a, I was a fucking nerd. What, what, what's the girlfriend? I was too, like, but I still had a girlfriend of the fucking nerd too to make me watch that bullshit. Yeah, did not. I, I was looking at her see. like a fucking nerd. Like you like this shit? <laughs> Let me go find my no. Spider-Man comics. Fuck this shit. <laughs> Anyway, that's all the news we want to talk about. Now let's actually get into the podcast. Let's get into the Spider-Man Far From Home, and let's just get right into it. So, normally we start the podcast off where we talk about if it's a new comic book movie, we talk about where we know the comic book from and where do we know Spider-Man from. It's been so many fucking Spider-Man movies. We've done this shit before. I know where you know Spider-Man from. I know where I know Spider-Man from. We can go right into it. I do want to ask you this, uh, Eli. How was your theater experience? It was cool. I saw it in IMAX. It was cool. Um, Damn you! Mm-hmm. I live in a city, dude. So <laughs> I live in an urban area. Where <laughs> you gotta rub it in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I gotta take horseback to go see a fucking movie. <laughs> yeah, we have like buses and you know mailmen, <laughs> streets, <laughs> streets, you know stoplights and shit. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So yeah, that was your experience. My experience was um, I didn't see it in IMAX. I did see it in pretty much the best scenario I could see it for in Mississippi, which is pretty much that 4DX thing. So you know, oh you see really? It. Yeah, so yeah, you yeah. Can so you smell see it. it. You see it in you 3D. Have to smell it. Yeah, I, I can't smell shit in there. You know, it's not like, <laughs> but like you know, when you uh, when something starts rumbling and the seats start jumping and moving and all this shit like that. So I got all that experience, you know, from that. Um, it wasn't as it wasn't as movable as like Infinity War. Like Infinity War, that third act, all kind of bullshit was going around. You were just all in your seat, like, oh, oh, oh shit. And I'm going to throw you out of, out of the uh, seat. But, man, not too much shit in there, but, you know, it was still pretty cool. I still had it cranked all the way to the max to see how it goes. Uh, the weird thing about this thing, Eli, is that the movie came out on Tuesday. So, when did you see the movie? I saw it um, Wednesday? Yeah, I saw it Wednesday. You saw Wednesday? Okay. Yeah. So 
Because it's weird because normally when we do these reviews, like we may see it like on Thursday, Friday, or maybe even a Saturday. You know. Yeah. So by the time we do the move the review, the movie is still fresh in our minds. This shit feel like it came out last week. Yeah, yeah. I mean I remember it coming out Tuesday and I checked at the listings, but it was already sold out. Like okay. where I was see, at. I yeah. didn't even realize it was coming out on Tuesday. I just happened to look on the uh I was actually looking on Fandango to see what time I could get my ticket Thursday or Friday. I'm looking at the time and I'm seeing, oh, it's Tuesday? It's today? I'm not doing shit. I mean, just go and see the movie, you know? <laughs> so, yeah, so I decided to just go in and saw the movie. It was a pretty fairly packed crowd, you know? And like I said, it's Spider Man. You expect that. So, mm-hmm. yeah, overall, um, that's what we got to the movie. So, oh, let's get into the let's get into the box office numbers. Then we're going to jump okay. into that. Okay. So, Eli, give it to me. What was the number one movie of the week? Well, it had to be Spider-Man. It had to be Spider-Man far and away. Well, far from home, but far from home was far and away. Uh, number two, we got Toy Story 4. Number three, we have Yesterday. Number four, we have Enemy Will Come Home. Comes Home, sorry about that. Uh, number five, Aladdin. Number six, Midsummer, which has been getting a lot of buzz going right now. Uh, number seven, The Secret Life of Pets 2. Uh, number eight, Men in Black International. Uh, number nine, uh, Avengers Endgame. Ooh. Oh, I saw it again. You saw it again? Yeah. Um, they, wait, wait, it, didn't have, I, it didn't have any of the extra footage that they said it was going to have. Oh, so they bamboozled you. Yeah, no shit. Oh, that's fucked up. But my theater was packed, though. Really? Like, I, yeah. It was like, I got in there. I was like, holy shit, there's all these motherfuckers in here. So I had to, like, <laughs> sit to the side again and shit. <laughs> wow. <laughs> like six months later, you still got to find, you know, like, what the fuck, crowds. man? <laughs> it was one of the, like, smaller theaters, you know? It wasn't, like, the big giant ones. It was a little, you know, a, a, a little, a, one of the smaller capacity ones. But still, it was, like, a shit ton of people in there. So let me ask you this. What about crowd reaction? Did you still got, like, the same, like, reaction that he did like the first time people watched it or? Uh, no like there wasn't clapping and cheering like the first couple times i seen it all the applause and all that shit okay. wasn't happening i did hear sniffles though during, oh, wow. you know, okay. during towards the end and all that shit i heard sniffling going on and shit and but um but you know but you know people still laughed and all that shit you know okay so if you would have make a guess if you were like if i was to ask you your assumption of it you would think that Everybody in the theater, or at least the majority of them, this wasn't their first rodeo. I'm sure. Yeah, okay. I'm sure it was. Yeah, it was fans. We got yeah. a new poster though. Well, okay, that, well, that's, that's something. Yeah, it was a the uh, the iron uh, the iron gauntlet. It was, was a the poster. piece of paper, wasn't it? Oh, yeah, it was, it was, it was like a, a regular paper uh, poster, but it was the iron, iron gauntlet. So I heard it would give it yeah. out. So that's something. Yeah, so that was nice. But uh, but yeah, I was a little peeved that. Uh, yeah, I waited till the end of the credits. And, <laughs> and expecting to see nothing? all this shit. It was just that Spider-Man trailer, and then it like ended. And I'm like, what? What the fuck? Wow. Okay. Because here's what I'm hearing. What happened? Uh, I didn't see it myself, but I went online and saw it. Uh, well, I heard about it. They said the intro was the Russos giving an intro, thanking people. Then they said afterwards with like a two-minute Stan Lee tribute, mm-hmm. and then uh, they said the end post credit scene was a scene with Hulk in it. Yeah. But they said the Hulk like CGI wasn't finished. So he kind of looked like Henry Cavill Superman in, in uh, Just League. So he had a mustache? <laughs> <laughs> Something like that. Basically, they like PS1 graphics or some shit like that, you know. Okay. And that was pretty no, much I heard it. about I heard about the scenes. It's just like, yeah, they weren't there. And I was, you know, this was what, Monday? Because right. they said they were going to release it last weekend. I thought, okay, I'll go check it out. And Monday, and it, there was nothing. I was a little, I was a little, yeah, you got your little peeved. You I know shit. Way back on that. Yeah. Like fuck you, fuck you. Not, no, Avatar's number one, assholes. <laughs> Just for that. Just for that shit. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's gonna be close because right now, uh, Endgame is fifteen million away from uh, Avatar. Eli, I don't think it's gonna make it. Yeah, I don't think it's gonna make. It. I think it's gonna be it for uh, it before they pull it out. What's number ten? What's number ten? What's number ten? Rocket Man. I just like saying this shit, and so yeah, that's the number. That's the top ten box office right there, and I. I guess with no further ado, we can kind of jump into this movie. Now, Eli, I know you did a review for Geek's Ass. Mm-hmm. And I purposely did not listen to your review on Geek's Ass. I wanted to make sure I went in fresh. I was going to download it. I was going to listen to it. But I was like, uh-uh, uh-uh, not going to do it. I want to hear what you have to say up front. Now, after this, I will go back and listen to Geek's Ass and hear what you got to say about that. So going into it, I have no idea what you have to say about this movie. So I don't know 
if we're going to fight or <laughs> you know if this is going to be a a good podcast all i know is that my guard is going to be up the entire time depending on what you say okay uh because like i said you know what i'm gonna say so fuck it well um oh wait, wait okay so before we get started i'm gonna just just give your spoiler free review with, with, a, with a ranking on everything and, and then i'll go next and then we'll actually jump to spoiler after spoiler after spoiler because you, you can't talk about this movie without spoiler okay i don't think so, so. so spoiler free mm-hmm. it was a lot of fun i enjoyed it okay um i still love tom holland okay he's a cutie <laughs> <laughs> i think he totally embod- embodies peter parker to a t um uh, this movie just like homecoming really you know, encapsulates the nature of Spider-Man comics of a kid, you know, awkward teenager juggling the pressures of adolescence and and high school and, 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 you know, having a crush on a girl on top of being a superhero. I thought they managed that just great. You know, Spider-Man is always just about a kid in over his head who can never catch a break. And that continues with this movie. And that's what I like about it. That's what I've always liked about Spider-Man. He's a relatable kind of kid. Um, and Mysterio. I thought Mysterio was done very well. You know, mm-hmm. half of the movie, I'm sick I'm, because I know who the fuck Mysterio is. So I'm right. like, okay, I know, he, you know, I know he's full of shit. So what, what, how is he doing this? Because I kept watching the movie like, how is he pulling this shit off? Right. You know what I mean? This is all bullshit. I'm like, what? How the hell is he doing? And when they finally revealed how he was doing it, mm-hmm. I was like, okay, that's pretty fucking cool. I dig that. So, I uh, yeah, I thought it was cool. I had a lot of fun. Um, I don't like it as much as Homecoming, mm-hmm. but I still enjoyed it. Um, yeah, uh, four out of five. Four out of five. <laughs> okay, cool, yeah. cool. Good review on it. Okay. So, uh, my review on uh, Spider-Man Far From Home, uh, pretty much is similar to what you said on it, that, like I said, it, it, it embodies Spider-Man. It, even though no character in this movie really acts like they do in the comics, like I said, Aunt May don't act like she do in the comics. Uh, <laughs> MJ is like a completely different character from the comics. Peter doesn't even act like he does from the comics. But at the same time, it does have that comic book feel from it. Like, it does feel like this is, to me, out of all the Spider-Man movies, this feels like the most Spider-Man, like, the, basically the closest, to, like, the, the closest feeling to the comics that has been so mm-hmm. far. Because they yeah. really went there with some of these movies. Not just with Mysterio, but you had other characters in there, too. Even though they, and like I said, we're spoiling this minor spoiler, but not really. But Mysterio made up these bullshit characters. But they're still characters from the comics. Yes, the beginning of it was supposed to be MCU's version of Sandman. That Sandman, Water Dude was Hydro Man, Fire Dude was Molten Man, and I had to look up the last dude. The last dude, the Wind Dude, apparently that was a villain named Cyclone. So that okay. was the four elementals, but they're all basically like C-level Spider-Man villains. Because Spider-Man has so many fucking villains, there's no way they can make a movie with all of them, because some of them are not even worth putting in the movies, but you can just throw them in as mini boss level characters. So... A lot of time with these Spider-Man movies, and not even with the Sam Raimi movies and the the Tobey Maguire, what's what's the name? Garfield, that guy. Yeah. Sometimes the Peter Parker scenes are more engaging than the Spider-Man scenes. Yeah. And even with this movie, like the first half of it, I was more engaged in the Peter Parker scene, like the rom-com and him trying to you know tell MJ how he's feel. Honestly, it would get to the point that whenever the Spider-Man shit did come in, I was like, get this shit out the way so I can get back to the to the romance i want to see how what happens with him and mj you know yeah how he really yeah. to the friends and that asshole brad you know what he does with him you know? <laughs> yeah and and honestly and i'm gonna go ahead and say this i like this movie better than homecoming mainly okay. because in homecoming i felt like the entire movie i was just more invested in peter and the spider-man shit was just kind of just there this one, when the second half, and spoiler, Mysterio was full of shit. He's the real bad guy of the movie. Once Jake Gyllenhaal flips that switch, and he's like, hey, I'm the bad guy, and he like starts chewing scenery, then all of a sudden, I'm actually interested in the Spider-Man scenes, too. Just like I am the Peter Parker scenes. So it's like, okay, the Spider-Man scenes are keeping up with the Peter Parker scenes in this movie, and I'm engaged both ways. Honestly, Mysterio... To me, the way he's handled might be the best Spider-Man villain they've had. You might have a uh, Doctor Octopus. Now, I know what you're gonna say. What about Vulture? 
was probably in the spoiler six, but I'll go ahead and explain right now. So, yes, Mysterio's uh, motivation and origin, whatever you're saying, is basically Vulture 2.0. He has the exact same plot as Vulture, you know. But the way they handle him visually, power-wise, threat-wise, and just the way just Jake uh, Gyllenhaal was chewing scenery, I found him to be a more engaging villain. Because I just I thought he was a more of a threat. Uh, like I said, Zendaya, the first movie, she was just there, kind of in the background, so like that. This movie, I really think she held her own. She brought way more to the scene than what's her face in the last movie, Liz, whatever. Mm-hmm. Uh, she was actually, a, I feel like her and Tom Holland had better chemistry. So when they was on scene, you know, it clicked. Happy was in this, you know, he was there. There was no Robert Downey Jr. to overshadow everything, even though he technically still overshadowed everything without even being there. Uh-huh. But at least his, physically he wasn't there. So it, it felt, Far From Home felt more like a Spider-Man movie placed in the MCU where Homecoming felt like an MCU movie with Spider-Man in it. You know, Iron Man popping up, Captain America popping up. They got all these references popping up back and forth. With this one, it felt more focused on Spider-Man and him overcoming what he needs to do and, and finish this shit, you know. And, and basically, this is not Spider-Man Begins like Homecoming was, where it felt like, okay, we're rebooting and starting from scratch, and he's got to relearn everything. It did feel like, in this movie, Spider-Man at the height of his powers. Like, this is, you know, he, he is Spider-Man, not Spider-Man with training wheels on. This is Spider-Man. And so that's what I like mm-hmm. about that. Um, yeah, and overall, I'm not going to get into the end credit scenes. We got plenty of time. We're going to talk about that. But overall, yeah, I'm going to give the movie 4.5 out of 5. I, I Honestly, I thought the movie was awesome. I really want to see it again. All right. And so, uh, that being said, can we move on to the actual, like, spoilers and all that bullshit and jump right into it? Yeah. Okay, so like I said, we talked about it. Now, one thing I do want to talk about... Uh, because, like I said, the rest of the movie is just pretty much just spoilery anyway. But let's talk about the very beginning of it. How do you think they handle the aftermath of Endgame? Like, in general, not just the beginning of it, but, like, the entire movie. Like, how do you... Because this is supposed to be the, the final movie of Phase 3. So, how do you think they handle Endgame? Um, I thought it was a little, like, goofy, you know? I But I thought it was meant to be, you know, with the whole Whitney Houston song. I thought it was... This is so corn. I mean, I'm... You know me, I'm too metal for that shit. I don't like that song. I was never a fan of that song, you know? Uh, what about so the Parton version? Yeah, yeah, same shit. I don't care, you know? <laughs> so when it started playing, I'm like rolling my eyes. I'm like, okay, this is totally corny and cheesy and just, you know, just a groaner. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. <laughs> but then when it shows that it was actually part of the whole, um, the, the, the school announcement, the morning announcement at, at school. Mm-hmm. And the thanks for that move and tribute. Then it was funny, and then they they proceed to explain everything, and it, it's kind of goofy. Oh, and did you see the Getty image uh, pop up by the kids? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> all that shit. Yeah, it was all viral, and the whole thing about the blip, and they explained everything real quick. And I, I kind of was like, okay, how how the fuck? I, I did kind of like question, how does that fucking work now? But then again, I'm like, oh, who cares? You know, just right. go along with it. You know, <laughs> just like the end, the time travel and end game. You're like, wait a second. That doesn't really, how does this work? But the, who cares? Right. You, know? <laughs> you know, it's all fiction, you know? Right. <laughs> so, so, yeah, it was a little goofy, but, you know, that that's, but that's the appeal. That's the comic book, the element of, you know, these movies. You just, you know, yeah, it's all bullshit. You know, if you don't care by now, why? You know, what's the point? But, you know, I'm, 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 I'm along for this ride. You know, yeah. it's 20-something movies in, whatever. <laughs> yeah, Sure, the blip. Yeah, okay. You know, <laughs> Even so, the name of it, the blip, not the yeah. decimation or the yeah. snapping or the snapture. The blip? Yeah. Okay. That whole, because I was like, how the fuck? Okay, everyone left for five years, but other people, they didn't age, and they started the school year all over. I'm like, what the fuck? They, yeah, right. They said some bullshit about they started school year over. Like, why did they start the school year over? That and like, how sense. the fuck? If it was instant, like they showed the like the basketball game. Mm-hmm. Like, how is that still going on five years later? And I'm like, Wait, oh, I, I who, figured who cares? it was on a basketball night. You know, like five years later, they came back. They were having the same game or something. No, 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 no. It just happened to be that's the night they had basketball game. So. I don't know. But they disappeared during the basketball game. Right, they did. And then they and then they came back during the basketball game. 
or with a different basketball game. Okay. Like to be a, a, I'm, I'm just I'm I'm trying to connect this shit. You know? <laughs> like you just trying to make to be sense a basketball game that night, you know. Oh, yeah, five years later, there was five another basketball. Like, yeah, it happens, you know. Anniversary yeah. of the five game we did, whatever. <laughs> it's a rival game. I don't know. <laughs> Oh uh, shit! They're gonna make a whole new spinoff series. There'll be a TV show about this, <laughs> <laughs> right? And, and honestly, yeah. not even though I did give the score higher than you. Honestly, Eli, there is a lot, a lot of plot holes in this movie. Okay. A lot of shit where you got to do some least lot. Now, look, me, I never knock a movie for that type of shit or having plot holes or unexplained shit as long as I'm having a good time in it. But the plot holes were so big in this movie, it. It really had me scratching my head. Now, keep in mind, I'm the guy that defends Justice League, mm-hmm. you know, against everybody else, because I say, oh no, this plot hole, intended plot holes that. But this movie, and I'm gonna dig into it later on. There's a lot of shit that's just I can't, I can't put it together. I can't make give a good excuse for it. And I'm normally really good at this shit, but I can't make a good excuse for some of this shit. But the basketball scene, I can. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but yeah, but uh, then, then now as far as like the the decimation or the snapping and the blipping like that, I don't know because that's the thing. Okay, now we talked about what's the better move between Homecoming or Far From Home, but we both know there's a better Spider-Man movie than both of those, and that's oh, that's in in uh, Spider-Verse. Oh yeah, yeah. And the thing about Spider-Verse because Spider-Verse, it felt like there was more stakes, like there was more weight to that movie. Even though it was a cartoon, it felt like it was more weight to that movie, like uh. Like you really understood where this character come from, and you understood the danger and the sympathy for them. Where these movies, these Marvel movies, are more lighthearted. So you just had a movie where everybody was dead for five years and comes back all of a sudden and it's just played for laughs. You're like, I don't know, man. I don't know. Yeah, and they could have right. went a little bit harder, but you got to. Re- but at the tone, the way these Marvel movies are now. Endgame, Infinity War, or any Russo movie aside, for the most part, they are played for comedies and shit like this. You know, there's not really any high stakes to them. It's not really any weight to them. You know. Yeah. So, what can you do? Like I said, we've watched all these movies like that. That's par for course. This is what these movies have been. We can't blame them for being what they have been. So yeah, they decided to play it for laughs. They plays a little clip of Iron Man and Captain America. So apparently. Captain, everybody believes Captain America is dead now. Yeah, I yeah. guess so. Vision, Black Widow, whatever like that is played for laughs. You got the blip in. You got the substitute teacher talking about how his wife faked his her death so she can run off with some <laughs> other guy. That's played for laughs. You know stuff like that. Oh, uh, and like I said, I love Tom Holland as Spider Man. But like I said, when I went back and watched Spider Verse and I see how that Peter Parker is and I see how this Peter Parker is. And I go to comic books and read how Peter Parker is. There's something off, and I have to explain. It. I like I said, I'm not that guy. I'm not that guy that can't separate the comics from the movies. But like I said, there is a huge difference between these two characters because, like I said, in the comics, Peter Parker is a schlub. He's always fucking up. Nothing ever goes right for him. You always feel bad for him. Nobody feels bad for Tom Holland. <laughs> I mean, he's got a, a a milf aunt, you know. You know, he's got a, a billionaire stepdaddy that left him all kind of bullshit. A private jet that he can just use his, his workshop anytime he fucking feels like it to make him whatever he wants. You know, uh, he's got a butler and Happy Hogan that are coming his, you know, you know, rescue at the drop of a hat. You know, uh, he, he's blanging every banging every black chick in high school. I mean, how, <laughs> how do you feel bad for this guy? Yeah. You know, <laughs> but at the same time, you just you got to put that stuff to the side. Just do it. Like, he's not even a nerd, really. Yeah, like I mean, that, dude cool. he's part of the MCU. He's it's not on his own, you know. That you're talking about Spider Man on his own and doing his own shit, and yeah, he's a loser. He's a total fuck up, right? You know. But I mean, <laughs> Spider Man in the comics has more heroes flying around and bullshit like that, and he's still a fuck up. Uh. Meanwhile, this guy could just call up just you know, uh, Tony Stark. Like he can just get Tony. He probably has extra Tony Stark money if he wanted to. You know, I need five thousand dollars. Just give me some shit. You know. Yeah. So that's my thing. But like I said, I love the movies. That is a difference. And, I, and, I, and it is some things I have to get used to. Like people want to complain about MJ and all these other folks like that. Peter Parker is probably the biggest departure I've had anybody in these movies. But I mm-hmm. still like him 
as a character because he does walk this fine line between nerd and cool dude. He's not Andrew Garfield where he's like, okay, that dude's just way too cool to just pretend like he's getting beat up by Flash Thompson who's smaller than him. <laughs> that didn't even make any fucking sense. And he's like fucking 50 years old and shit. Right. Got white hair, white hair and shit. Right. <laughs> In his eyebrows. Hello, young youth. <laughs> Uh, whatever. Like I said, the rom com part of it, I like it because that carried the beginning part of the movie, like the rom com part of it, him trying to get with Mary Jane. I'm sorry, MJ, my fault. And yeah. just the fact that Brad, every time he stepped up, because at first you thought Brad was like a cool guy. You thought Brad was going to be the bad. He just had to work his way down. But then all of a sudden, Brad just kind of turned to an asshole. And you like, man, I really want to take that guy down. Like, even when he called down Edith, and Edith was about to shoot Brad, and you almost think, like, well, maybe, maybe you should let him, you know. <laughs> Maybe you shouldn't get the glasses. Maybe you should just let the shit happen because the guy is a fucking asshole. Yeah. You know, but that's my thing there. So, uh, and that's another another thing about, like, okay, now let's talk about Mysterio. Let's talk about Jake Gyllenhaal. Like I said, he is a big part of the movie. Honestly, I feel like the movie was going to pretty much be, uh, was going to make a break depending on Jake Gyllenhaal. Um, yeah. I've seen some people online complaining because the reveal wasn't as, you know, I don't know. The twist wasn't as big as they thought it was. Basically, the twist is exactly what we thought it was, and people are criticizing it for that. What, what, what do you think about that, Eli? That they they wanted to be surprised more or yeah. something? Yeah, they wanted to be surprised. <laughs> like it, it, basically, the prize was exactly what we thought it was going to be. You know, like he was also a woman or some <laughs> or some shit. You know, he <laughs> was from an alternate universe, and then alternate universe, or he is magic, or. Whatever oh, the fuck, you know. Oh, he or was maybe really... he's not even a bad guy. Somebody else shows up, you know. Oh, I don't know. I mean, I thought it was... Well, it depends who it is. I mean, if it's people who don't know who the fuck Mysterio is, I can understand that, you know. But but for those familiar with the comics and know that Mysterio is actually a villain, that he's actually an illusionist, and I thought that was pretty well accurate, you know, even even to his first appearance, you know. And the old books, you know, the whole what what he was doing and, you know, trying to and the whole framing of Peter Parker, trying to trick everybody into pretending he was a hero. He was the hero and all that shit. That's pretty comic book accurate. Right. You know? But so, some people are complaining about that. Yeah. Well, you know, that's, <laughs> of course they are. They complain about everything. They complain about everything. We, we yeah. just we just talked about this before the show started. Little Mermaid's black, you know. Right. <laughs> Who gives a shit? <laughs> oh, Mulan trailer just dropped today. I hadn't even looked at that shit. I already know that's outrage. Oh, yeah. Why? Because she's Chinese instead of Korean or something? I guess. I don't know. We'll <laughs> find out. We... <laughs> Somebody's losing this shit over there right now. But, yeah, uh, as far as, like, the Mysterio thing, uh, it's the funny thing about it, like, the Mysterio thing. Okay, so I'm in the theater, and you know when when – Peter was about to hand over the glasses to him. Like, okay, Peter didn't want the glasses. Glasses, too much responsibility. Yeah. And he's just like, look, take this shit. Get this shit away from me because I, this shit is too much for me. And when he's giving it to, you know, giving it to Mysterio, you can hear the crowd saying, no, 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 don't do it. Don't do it. So the crowd isn't believing this bullshit for a second. You know, yeah. it's not like the crowd is full. Uh, let's let's uh say this a different. Let's say another plot twist that really wasn't a plot twist that everybody was full uh wasn't fooled by uh okay Bucky. Okay. They tried to make it seem like that was a plot twist. Like Winter Soldier was Bucky. The funny thing is when I saw Cap I saw Winter Soldier in the movie twice, and both times when Captain when it was revealed that Captain America found out that the Winter Soldier was Bucky twice, I heard the crowd go, <gasps> I'm like are y'all really surprised about that? <laughs> like, first off, Sebastian Stan was doing press for the thing. I think they even spoiled it in the trailer. They pretty much flat out told you in the movie who Winter Soldier was before he even got there, and you're shocked. So I'm thinking the whole movie watches. Okay, maybe people are gonna be shocked that you know Mysterio is the bad guy in the movie like that. But no, nobody was shocked. Everybody was in the movie was like, no, 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 don't do this. This guy's full of shit. Don't do this, Peter. Don't be a dumbass. You know. Mm -hmm. So nobody took the bait on it. I was thinking like. Because, yes, we we know Mysterio is full of shit. But there's always going to be that one person that's never heard of any of this shit before. Yeah. Even though it might be fooled by it. But no, I think even people that never heard of Mysterio or never heard of the character before or anything about it, I don't even think they were fooled. Yeah. And so that's my thing. Like I said, I'm, I'm a, I may go back and see the movie again just to see if anybody gets caught by that again. But yeah, I don't, I don't think anybody was fooled with that. But 
how how are you going to complain about something comic accurate? I mean, isn't that what we want? <laughs> yeah, I guess. Like, if, if they didn't do it, people would complain about that. Well, I think, yeah, maybe it's like they were expecting to be even more. Maybe they were expecting that vulture moment, that car ride right. in, in Homecoming, right. which was such a strong scene. It's such a great scene that there was that there was a twist. That, oh, this is the this is the the father of the guy of the girl Peter has a crush on. Right. And then all of a sudden, it just the whole movie turned into an old another direction. The stakes just like got even higher after that scene. Right. And you're like holy shit, this brought everything to another level. Uh, what Peter was involved in, and it really fleshed out Vulture. It's like okay. I don't have to kill you, but I will if you fuck up my shit. Right. You know, it Be- just brought the movie to another level. And maybe that's what they were thinking. Like, oh, my God, this is going to turn the movie on its on its axis, like like the way Homecoming did. And maybe that's why they're complaining. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> and, and, and like I said, it, exactly what you said, that Vulture, that whole twist made it personal because it made him personal connected to Peter. Yeah. Uh, Mysterio was never personally connected to Peter. If anything, like I said, uh, Vulture was a compelling, compelling villain because you understood why he was doing the shit he was doing. He has to feed his family. He has to feed his employees because he, you know, they need jobs. And, and plus, we're adults, so the shit that Vulture's doing, we kind of under, I kind of understand what he's doing. Yeah. But like I said, Peter is a teenager. He's a kid. The stuff that Vulture has to do and the responsibility he have. That's beyond Peter's understanding at that level. Yeah. It's two different things because Spider-Man, a teenager like that, he just sees the world as black and white. Where Vulture has been fucked over by Tony Stark. You know, uh, he's trying to feed his family stuff like that so you understand where he's coming from. Now, fast forward this to, to Mysterio. Mysterio pretty much has the exact same motivation except he doesn't have a family to feed him like that. He's just pretty much just an asshole. He's an yeah. unstable asshole that just wants to be rich and famous. Mm-hmm. And he got fired because Tony Stark knew he was an asshole that just wanted to be rich and famous. That's why he got fired, you know. Yeah. Uh, like I said, even though Tony Stark isn't in this movie, he's technically in this movie because this is the second movie where Peter Parker has to clean up Tony Stark's bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And so that's pretty much what it is. But at the same time, that's kind of like the whole theme. I, I won't say theme. Uh, the the point of the movie that Tony Stark left a huge vacuum. Not he left a vacuum in the MCU. He left a vacuum in Peter's life. Robert Downey Jr. left a vacuum in the movie franchises. They they address that right in the beginning during that morning announcement. Mm-hmm. They basically say what we're all thinking. What now? What Who's going to be right. the next Iron Man? What comes? Are there Avengers? You know what's going to happen now? Where do we go from here? That's what we're all thinking. That is almost like breaking the fourth wall. That is totally, you know, uh, you know what, basically putting a mirror up to the audience. Right. You know? <laughs> so it's not just in the movie. It's a metaphor, like for real life, when we think like that. Like, what do we do after Robert Downey Jr.? Basically, yeah. what we're saying, you know. And so, and that's why, like, a lot of people were saying that Peter was stupid for what he did, like giving Mysterio the glasses. I get it. Yeah. For me personally, I understand it because the thing is, first off. Mysterio was pretending to be a good guy. He was Peter just lost his father figure for the second time. We didn't see Ben Parker, but we know Ben Parker died. So he just lost his second father figure. He sees Mysterio look like he has everything in hand, look like he has everything in control. And he, he sees another father. He sees another father figure in Mysterio. Was mm-hmm. he wrong for doing that? Maybe, but at the same time, like I said, Tony left a void. He was looking for somebody to fill that void. Mysterio knew he was looking for somebody to fill that void. He, he was pretending to be that. He was pretending to be the father figure that Peter needed just so he can get what he wanted from him. be honest I with you, th- this is exactly what pimps do when they're trying to recruit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> My brother said that on Geek Sack. He did? Okay. He that's said, why I got to go back. He said, Mysterio is a, he said Mysterio is a pimp. <laughs> is, that's exactly what pimps do. <laughs> yeah. Bait and switch. Bait and switch. You know? I'll be your lover. I'll be your father. I'll be your friend. <laughs> but you got to believe in me, baby. Yeah. You yeah. Me everything that I tell you to do is for the good of both of us. Now, can you dig that, baby? <laughs> <laughs> and so, yeah, yeah. So, that's everything that was going on. Um, and that's but why I think Peter part of it. Yeah. Oh, God. No, I was saying, and and that's why Peter fell for it because Mysterio was telling him everything he wanted to hear. You know, yeah, and, 
Yeah. And that's that's Peter's journey in this movie. Mm-hmm. You know, he's second guessing himself through yep. this whole movie. He isn't sure of himself. After all he's been through, he he's he not only is he is he not sure of himself, he kind of doesn't want to be the hero. He just kind of wants to be a kid now. Right. And all of a sudden, he's faced with all these responsibilities. In the first movie, because of all the shit he saw, all the shit yeah. he's just been through, yeah, yeah. In Homecoming, he was all right. He's I can do this. I want to be an Avenger. I want to be. I want to hang with Iron Man. I want to do all this cool shit and and do a, you know play with all this cool tech and blah 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 blah. And not understanding that he wasn't ready. And this one, he was second guessing himself whether or not he was ready. And that's his struggle in this movie. Now, let me ask you that. I'm glad you brought that point up. Do you think that was the reason his spider sense wasn't working? Oh, yeah, yeah. That, okay. that might be a thing. Maybe. maybe. Like end, I said, yeah. I'm, I'm, trying, I'm trying to piece of shit together. I'm trying to. Yeah, because at the, and in, the, in the end, you know, he, he keeps second-guessing himself. And then he has that talk with Happy. He's like, hey, man, Tony was a wreck. Tony right. was all over the place. He second-guessed himself all the time. Mm-hmm. You know, and that's what that's what that was reflective with Peter. And in the end, it was his spider sense that saved him. That final battle with Mysterio. Because you got to trust was, your instinct. Right. Yeah. It was his, his spider, the Peter tingle that saved, him. <laughs> you know, that was his unique ability. Something. And again, it goes back to, you know, the power is within you. OK. You know? Did you get a feeling of Neo in the Matrix with that scene? <laughs> or was it just me? <laughs> now that you mention that, yeah, <laughs> I, I promise you, that's what it, it felt like. Like you, you, he reached another level of enlightenment or some yeah. shit. You know, he's like starting, he was using the force. Yeah, he's starting to believe. <laughs> <laughs> right, that's exactly what I was thinking. He's starting to believe. Like he's no longer, you know, listening. Nobody else in his ear. You know, no, yeah. no illusion. He's just trusting his gut, his instinct, yeah. and he's just reacting before he's even thinking. Yeah, because all the bullshit. I mean, Mysterio. Was I mean now that I'm thinking about it, I mean Mysterio is is a so a metaphor of all the bullshit that Peter was juggling. Right. You know what's real? What what do I do? You know he's putting up. You know he had people would just make you believe anything if you just listen if you just fall for it. Yeah, and in the end he had to listen to himself and yeah, like you said, trust his own instincts and that's what he did. That's what saved him in the end. Yeah, I mean because people want to complain about the Spider Sense because the Spider Sense was working in Infinity War. Spider Sense wasn't working in this movie. Like, why did it go out? They never explained why it stopped working. You know. Yeah. I kind of just hand waved I mean, that. I, I'm just like, but at the same time, it, it's probably what, what you're saying that Peter is second guessing himself so much that he's not trusting his Spider Sense. Like, it may yeah. be going off. He's not trusting it. Yeah. You know. Yeah. He yeah, he has. I mean, it's 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 and it's it's another s- symbolic of adolescence of growing up. I mean, yep. this is you know, Peter is growing up. He's getting more response. Part of growing up is taking on these responsibilities, you know, which right, is what he's, he's not sure that he's the guy that needs that, that Tony Stark believes he is. He doesn't believe yeah. that, you know? And so, yeah, I totally buy it when he gives the, 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 the glasses, the Mysterio. Yeah. Okay. Cause he doesn't want the responsibility, which I'm starting to, I don't know. It's starting to believe because he should have learned this shit from uncle Ben, mm-hmm. but he's not, but I'm, I'm a hand wave that I'm just, I'm just let that go. He wants to be a kid. He doesn't want the responsibility. He wants to get the responsibility to this guy. He thinks now, like I said, we know mysterious full of shit that should have. And this is where we start getting into the leaps of logic that we have to take, because let's talk about Nick Fury. Now, we understand why Spider-Man trusts Mysterio. Why the fuck does Nick Fury trust Mysterio? Now, we, we understand the, the, the end credit. We understand that. Yeah. But even with the end credit, why does this person, whoever the fuck this is, Trust Mysterio. Trust this bullshit story he's making up. He's from the multiverse? With no proof whatsoever? You know, mm-hmm. even though there is a guy, he didn't even change his name. He, he, there's <laughs> another guy named Quentin Beck who has hologram technology that used to work for Tony Stark. You can't just Google that shit. <laughs> None of this believe yeah. face value. Let's, there's no proof that this guy from the multiverse. He just makes this bullshit up, just going. But. I, I guess I kind of get it because there's so much uh, magic and mystical bullshit, and there's guardians flying around stuff like that. At this point, people at people at this point in the MCU, people will believe anything. Yeah, you know. And okay, I kind of go with that, but it. Okay, I kind of just talk myself out of it. Okay, I kind of believe that myself. Well, if we're if we're gonna go comic accurate, 
Doesn't Mysterio, like, his speech patterns mimic, like, hypnosis and all that shit? I think he learns that, he, yeah, he learns that shit, like, later on or something. Like, he does learn yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, so he can, like just, just by talking to you, he's, like, tricking you and shit. Yeah, so it, because they didn't have holograms back in the 60s, so he had to do other shit like hypnosis and make you believe what he wanted to believe because he was a loser. But that's who was with his helmet on and shit. You know? Yeah, because his helmet. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. It, I mean, you, you're probably right. You're probably right. Like I said, I haven't read a whole lot of Mysterio like I should have, but the only time I read Mysterio when he pops up in the Sinister Six and he's causing bullshit with them, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, what else I was going to say? Um, oh, just now that I think Mysterio was like a metaphor for the way the MCU makes movies? Because think about it. His main costume was okay, a mocap costume. Okay, okay. Yeah, I know you I know you caught that. I know you caught that. No, I'm no I'm no obvious I like would you expand on that? Oh, okay. <laughs> you're you're dropping you're dropping bod jewels here now. Okay. I gotta hear this. <laughs> like I said, I probably need to watch the movie again, but it's just something that was in the back of my mind because like I said, Mysterio's main now, now in the comics. Mysterio is a stunt man. Like I said, he was in the movie. Yeah. He was a stunt man. But uh-huh. this is 2019. The stunt man isn't as big as it used to be. Now the stunt man is all CGI. It's all movie effects. It's all computers and stuff like that. And that's how he does everything. So when he's making his illusions and stuff like that, when he's in the room with that Tony Stark built this in a cave, that that dude. So yeah. they're peeling it together. But the way they're doing it, the creative process, it almost feels like that's how they make a Marvel movie because he's in a mocap suit. And, and he was t- he was in a mocap suit. He was in a real mocap suit, like the yeah. probably the same one that he was making the movie with. And he was telling <laughs> the guy, mm, maybe we need to make that bigger. Mm, maybe we need to bring that down. Mm, maybe we need to expand that. Like they're making a movie. They're making a real life movie. Yeah. You know. They're doing they're they're doing what like James Cameron's do trying to do. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. <laughs> like a real movie live action. It it is that's yeah. what he's trying to do there. So but but here's my thing. Why does he need Edith to begin with? Who Tony or or uh, Mysterio. Mysterio? Yeah. Well, I think he just that was like the the biggest like fuck you to Tony Stark. Like okay. oh now now I'm in charge of his company now. Okay. The reason I, I'm saying that because he already has the drones. He had the drones before he got Edith. Yeah, but they were his own. He was it was his own illusion tech or whatever it was called. I got you. Now, so now he now, now he had, now, oh. yeah. Now he's got the whole shield around the earth. He's gonna control yeah, so he can all make that bigger, shit. bigger, bigger shit. Okay, so yeah. I got you saying so that hologram, like the 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 nightmare sequence, he probably couldn't pull it off before, but now that he got Edith. That's how he was able to pull that shit off because he's got bigger and better hologram. But it made him more powerful. Like his holograms more powerful. I I guess, or he I, can be, or something. Yeah, I guess it's it's a leap of logic. You know, another reason why were they so hell bent on bringing Peter to this shit anyway? Yeah, no shit. I mean, I, I get it. Thor's off world. I get it. They're not allowed to mention Captain Marvel's name, but you still got Black Panther. You still got Falcon, <laughs> who's the fucking Captain America now. Ant Man, Wasp, Hawkeye still flying around somewhere. Uh, who the fuck else out there? Scarlet Witch ain't doing shit. Yeah, no shit. You can get any one of them. Bring them on here and get this shit done. Hell, you got Mysterio. Even if you believe the bullshit he's saying. When Spider-Man shows up, Spider-Man doesn't even do shit. He's yeah. sitting there watching this dude like a fucking groupie. <laughs> but no, you're going to drag Spider-Man, who's a fucking 16-year-old kid, away from this shit when he doesn't even want to be bothered with this shit. No, no, you're going to make him do it. Yeah, you could have called hi- hijack anybody. the whole trip and shit. Right, you could have called anybody. <laughs> Fucking the defenders ain't doing shit. Luke Cage, Daredevil, one of them. <laughs> They're waiting for you to call them. <laughs> so, like I said, it's a leap of logic, but I'm just gonna go with it. I'm just gonna let that ride. Oh, uh, like I said, but that, that's the main thing I, I have with that. Oh, um, shit. Anything else we gotta talk about before we jump into the the, the, the big big shit? You know what I'm talking uh, about. Okay, go ahead. Let's oh, go. Let's go. Let's do it. Okay, because this is the big big shit. Let's just let's just jump into it. So. Hopefully everybody stayed behind the after credit scene because if you haven't, this is a huge, huge, huge spoiler that is about to drop. If you, and if you don't know about this, I don't know why the fuck you don't. Cause you're not a real Marvel fan. So yeah. the end credit scene actually had like three bombs that they dropped. Not even the other three, just the one credit scene just had three bombs that dropped. One bomb that dropped. J.K. Simmons was back as J. Jonah Jameson. Mm-hmm. Like there was rumors that was going about that, but yeah, he's back. Not only he's back, but he's not. And he's bald. And he's bald. That's the thing. So he's not. 
in the same capacity like he's playing the same actor but you can feel like it's a different character like he's not playing the same version of J. Jonah Jameson he was playing in the, in the Raimi movies it's a different version of J. Jonah Jameson uh this one is like a uh feel like an Alex Jones Infowars type thing yeah he's basically doing a podcast yeah you know? daily but they do mention daily bugle yeah but it's like dailybugle.net so it's like a okay. website now um basically it kind of feels like if anybody played the spider-man ps4 game it was basically that yeah yeah you know, that's, yeah. Basically, that's basically what it was so because he was always doing like podcast bullshit spider-man's a menace blah blah so that's the one thing spider-man's a menace bam we we get that the second thing uh spider-man is framed for all the bullshit mysterio did yeah uh and, and mysterio is still treated as a hero so all the murders and all the destruction stuff like that Spider-Man is blamed for that shit. That's that's like I said, that's classic J. Jonah Jameson shit. Spider-Man is a menace. Spider-Man did this bullshit. Blah blah blah. That's it. The third one, which is the doozy, is that Mysterio outs Peter Parker as Spider-Man to the world. Yeah. Like holy fuck. Like that's when the crowd was like, holy shit, what the fuck just happened? You know. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, what what you, what you think about Eli? How, how was your crowd reaction or whatever? You know what that? Uh, well, I took it as like, holy shit, they're really moving shit forward. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like they're they're like skipping so much lore and just launching into, you know, are they trying to get to like, uh, like other big events and books and stuff, or trying to make Peter Parker? Doesn't he eventually become head of his own company and all that shit? Yeah, and, Parker Industries, stuff like that. Yep. Yeah, I mean, are they, it just sounds like, you know, they're really pushing forward with that, you know. Yeah. I don't, you know, but also made me wonder, it's like, well, how many more movies does Tom Holland have with, with Marvel? You know, like, how like, far are they taking a One, one left. Okay. Yeah, yeah, he's just got one movie left on his contract, Spider-Man 3, and, and that's it. They may have to rework the contract after that, but yeah, he just got one movie left on his contract. Yeah. So I, yeah, it was it's like, oh wow, they're doing this already, you know? <laughs> yeah. So I mean, because yeah. you can't walk that back now. Yeah, we we've read comic books before, like when Superman gets out as Clark Kent, and yeah, he'll call up Martian Manhunter, Martian Manhunter to fly down, pretend to be Clark Kent, so you can see Superman and Clark Kent in the same place, and be like, oh okay. They're yeah. not the same guy, and then the story moves on, and it's back to so. So, yeah. yeah, they could do that in MCU, where a scroll could come down, pretend to be Peter Parker, where he flies by a Spider-Man, so they could yeah. do that shit, but you, yeah. can't, you can't walk that back. You can't walk it back, yeah. because you got too many people in his school that have seen Peter Parker missing as Spider-Man. You got too many people that have figured out, out the blue, that Peter Parker is Spider-Man. Vulture figured it out. Yeah. It's like, okay, the, the shit don't add up. That guy got to be Spider-Man. So you just can't have a scroll pop up at the same time with Spider-Man. It's just not that simple. Why yeah. the fuck was Spider-Man in Europe anyway and Peter Parker was there on, <laughs> in Europe at the same time? You know, yeah. it's too much. Of Why was he in Washington at the same time Peter Parker was in Washington? You know, yeah. Why was he in Germany in Civil War when Peter Parker was in Germany? <laughs> you know? yeah. it's, it's too much of a coincidence. So you can't walk that back with a scroll. It just can't happen. So, yeah, I mean, it's so, and it's weird, yeah, because so many Spider-Man stories rely on Peter Parker trying to keep his identity secret. Right. You know, you know I have Venom, and I mean, I'm going to just name a villain, you know. <laughs> like, like, you know, I know, I know who your family is now, you know. <laughs> <laughs> you know right, so. Green, Green Goblin, you know. Yeah. That's how you so. kill Green States to begin with. I'm going to attack your loved ones, you know. Yeah, so. Yeah, so, yeah like It's said, a big deal. You can't walk that back. I, Eli, I'm, I'm going to be honest. I'm, I'm, I feel like they shouldn't have did that. I feel like that last reveal, they shouldn't have did it. Yeah, I mean, I I, I, I can dig that. Now, I, like I, I, I said, don't mind I, them doing it. I just feel like I don't feel like it should have been done in this movie in an after credit scene. The reason yeah. I feel like that, because everything we just talked about this movie, I don't know how long this podcast has been going, but nobody gives a shit. The yeah. only thing they care about is that one part right there. That's all anybody else is talking about. It overshadowed everything that happened in this movie, which I think the movie is pretty good, but because of that one scene, everybody has completely forgot about it. Yeah. So you can't even talk about the movie because people are just worried about the one thing. I feel like having J.K. Simpson, Simmon was fine, as H.J. Jameson. I feel like having Spider-Man being set up as a murder was fine, and I feel like they should have left it at that, and it would have been cool, and then people were like, okay, that was pretty good. But having that 
you know, being outed as Spider Man, now everything else overshadowed. People have forgotten the whole movie. You're probably going to get people just downloading just that one scene and forgetting about everything else that happened in this movie, which yeah. I think they're well, missing out, but that's just how the internet is. And plus, like, like what we're saying is like, it, it's a little too soon for that. Right. You know, <laughs> like this is his second movie, you know. Yeah. Technically his eighth, but you, you get it. You know? Yeah. It's, 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 you know, the, that doesn't happen for such a long. I mean, Spider Man existed for decades before that it should ever happen. Exactly. You know? He's still 16 and he's out it. <laughs> yeah. Now, I, yeah. I get yeah. it. They're trying to go full circle because technically this is the last movie of the, uh, the, of phase three. And he's supposed to be technically the new Iron Man. And Iron mm-hmm. Man was out it in the first movie. Now he's out it in this movie. And plus there's so many parallels between him and Iron Man's movie anyway. Like for instance, when uh when he's on the private jet and he's making his, his own Spider Man suit and, and Happy because Happy gave him the whole speech about you're not Tony Stark. You'll never be Tony Stark. But then he sees him being Tony Stark. <laughs> you know? Yeah. He and the funny thing is a lot of this joke flew over everybody's head when uh Happy goes, I'm gonna put some music on. He plays A C D C yeah, and then uh, Peter goes, "Oh, I love Led Zeppelin." I love Led Zeppelin. Yeah. I was like, <laughs> Nobody caught that joke. <laughs> <laughs> oh, speaking of songs, yeah, is it sad that I recognize the Menudo song? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> I heard it when you said that, and I was just like, "Where the fuck is this Menudo song?" At? I think that was that was a scroll scene, wasn't it? No, it was in the beginning. It was one during one of those montages where they're traveling around europe and i think it was a cover like it was a, like an updated cover but i'm like is this a fucking menudo song because i remember because i'm old <laughs> <laughs> i remember but for those who don't know who the fuck menudo is they were like a boy band from like mexico and okay. they used to come on saturday morning cartoons like when i'd be watching like spider-man and his amazing friends and rubik's the amazing cube and all that shit and you know, Thunderbird, the Barbarian, Saturday morning cartoons, mm-hmm. Looney Tunes and shit. They would sometimes play like songs and like one of these, like on the Disney Channel where you saw Jonas Brothers and and uh, wasn't Zendaya on a Disney I, Channel I, and shit? I guess. I yeah, they would just play these like teeny bopper bubblegum shit during cur- cartoon breaks. And Menudo was one of them. So they were the Mexican would- Jackson 5. Basically, like, okay. was it Ricky Martin in Menudo for a spell? I think he was part of, yeah, Ricky Martin was in Menudo I'm for not a, a while. Ricky Martin expert, but yeah, okay. Yeah, so, <laughs> but that's how I, I remember that as a kid, <laughs> like, seeing Menudo come on TV and shit. And, like, <laughs> it's just sad that I actually recognized the song, too. <laughs> so, I mean, when you said that before I watched the movie, so the whole time I watched the movie, I'm listening for a Menudo song. Like, is that it? Is that it? Okay. Yeah. I'm pretty sure it was a it was the cover. It was like I was like a, like the I recognized the the melody. I was like, that's fucking. I amazing. even pulled up the soundtrack on Spotify just to see if I can find it. It wasn't there, but I'm I'm, yeah, I'm not I, saying it's not there. It probably is, but you know. Yeah, it's 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 a, probably a, another band covering because it sounded all like up to date and shit. But I I think they were covering a Menudo song. So <laughs> okay, <laughs> but well, yeah, that's how that's how yeah that's how much of a nerd I am. <laughs> <laughs> So hey, shout out to Ricky, Ricky Martin. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit. okay. Can we talk about the the last scene? Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, wait, let's talk about the last scene. Now this this scene was kind of confusing, but after I saw it, thinking about it, let it sink in. It kind of kind of clicked with me because, like I said, we and we kind of mentioned earlier that uh, Nick Fury and Maria Hill were scrolls the entire time in the movie. Yeah. And so. Uh, and, and be honest with you, Eli, if you actually pay attention to the movie, they actually kind of hit in it the entire time. Yeah. Because, like, yeah. like when they say Captain Marvel, you know, and he's like, don't invoke that name. At, at first, I thought that, you know, when I first thought about it, I was like, maybe they, they can't hate Captain Marvel because Captain Marvel, like, saved their race. And then I thought about it, like, maybe they revere her as, like, some kind of god or something. Or, really? like, their savior, you know. That's why they're like, don't you say her name like that, you know. Like, yeah. it almost but then it also makes sense of, yeah. But it also makes sense that, oh, that's why they bought Mysterio's bullshit. Exactly, because that Nick Fury would never fall for some bullshit like that. Never. Yeah. yeah. He would have known everything about Quentin Beck before. Even if he did say a bullshit line like he's from the multiverse and like that, Nick Fury would have never bought that shit. But, like I said, these guys aren't Nick Fury and and uh, Maria Hill, so that's it. Also, did you see they kind of had like a romance subplot going between those two? 
Uh, I don't. I, okay, sure. Okay. <laughs> hey, at first, I was watching the movie. I like. Is, is that his girlfriend? <laughs> Especially with the way they said it, you know, when Maria Hill shot that rocket launcher at the thing, and just the way they she said it, she was like, "You got me." She's like, "Yeah, I got you." I'm like, "Oh yeah." Okay, what the <laughs> fuck is going on? Like, I, I thought you had a professional relationship. You know? <laughs> Spies get lonely too, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> but then it would make sense at the end of the movie since they're married. You okay. Know, so yeah. It, yeah. It well, also, yeah. The scrolls are. Yeah. Yeah. The scrolls are yeah. married, but at the same time, any kind of sexual attraction that Maria Hill and, and Samuel Jackson have. That's why, because they're married, because they're hidden scrolls and shit like that. Meanwhile, Samuel Jackson is chilling on a boat in space somewhere. Yeah. You know? uh, and it, it may look like he's telling the other scrolls to get back to work and do the other bullshit he's doing. So uh, my first thought, and I went online and seen what people are saying, they're saying that he may be creating sword, which actually would make complete sense. You know, but people don't know what sword is. Sword is based like the space version of shield, like shield protects the ground, metahumans, all the shit like that. Sword basically protects the Earth from space to stop alien invasions from attacking. Since they just got attacked from alien invasions like about three, four times, it would make sense to form Sword to stop this shit before it even gets there. You know, And that's probably exactly what he's doing. He's teaming up with scrolls to, to build Sword. Uh, and some other Sword characters that have popped up. And the thing was, I think they didn't even have the rights to Sword at first. I think Fox had the rights to Sword. But now none of that shit even matters anymore. So you got Abigail Brand. She's like a green-haired, half-alien, some shit like that. Uh, Beast is her boyfriend or some shit. Because she said Beast reminds her of her father or some shit. I, I don't know what the fuck. It's weird. Uh, and some other folks on it, too. So they, Sword may be the new thing. You know, Agents of Sword. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, but that may be what's going on right now. So it looks like Marvel's going to, like, they really going to push the cosmic thing. And that's it. But, yeah, like I said, I think the biggest blip I had about this movie is that they shouldn't reveal his, his secret identity. You could have worked so much more stuff in there, because now he can't even work for the Daily Bugle. He can't get cursed out by J. Jonah Jameson anymore, you know? Because everybody yeah. knows who, who he is. How can he even go to high school? How they going to even revolve this shit? Because the thing is, with these Marvel movies, then none of these Marvel movies happen like the, the, the day after. You know, it's always like a year after or some bullshit like that. Yeah. And so, I don't know. Maybe maybe that's the, the director's like, that's for the next guy to figure out. <laughs> I'm done with this shit. <laughs> Ryan Johnson did. Right. That's <laughs> or J.J. Abrams did. Or right. whatever. Abrams. That's, that's their problem. <laughs> <laughs> I made my movie. I got my money. <laughs> yeah. So, oh, uh, shoot. you like, well, what else you got about uh, dress about the movie? Oh, I had uh, just one theory. You know the chick in Austria that uh, it looked like Pe- like when Peter got caught with his pants down? Yeah, yeah. I just thought, uh, just, 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 just a theory. Silver Sable. Her hair wasn't silver, so. but close enough. <laughs> <laughs> but then again, if she's a scrawl too, then yeah. <laughs> yeah, I guess none of that would matter. So yeah, uh, that was just a, yeah that that was just a thought that popped into my head. Like oh okay, you know, looking for Easter eggs and shit. Yeah, I I think that was just a funny gag just to have Brad walk in on you know, Peter looked like he was about to you know get some from this tall Amazon looking chick you know <laughs> I've heard some people have controversy on it what if it was reverse what if it was Nick Fury <sighs> doing that with Mary Jane you know it's like come on man don't don't go there <laughs> yeah it's, it's a joke let it go don't overthink it so, yeah um uh, I don't know Eli maybe they will come down later on and say that shit like yeah that was Silver Sable and she'll pop up again and start fighting Spider-Man and shit so yeah who you knows Plus, Silver Sable is like some kind of weird Eastern European company. She, hell, she might be from that place. Yeah, that's just, you know. Yeah, because her com- country is like made up of some bullshit or something like that. Silver Sable Nova or some shit. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. Like I said, just, it just popped into my head. As like, oh, oh. That's, that's right. It can't be her because Marvel didn't have the rights to her. Oh, okay. Just like Venom. Because they're trying to still make a Silver, Sur- Silver Sable movie. You know, Silver, Silver and Black or whatever. So. Oh, the know. black cat or whatever. Some whatever, shit. yeah, because it's gonna be black cat and it's gonna be silver sable. It's gonna be like a female buddy cop movie, kind of like a Charlie's Angels, with just two people, superpowers, and they're gonna fight the Magia. That reminds me. Okay, did I say it right? The Magia, Magia, Maga, Maga, whatever. Okay, remember the cut scene in the movie where the commercial where Spider Man had the iron spider suit and was fighting the mob goons and shit like that, and he told the cops, "I'm doing a good job, better than you are." Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
completely cut from the movie. Okay. Oh, yeah. Yeah, was not in the movie at all. So what uh, the director said is that on the Blu-ray, there's actually a bunch of cut scenes. What they're going to do is have it where Peter is trying to get a whole bunch of stuff, you know, getting ready for a European trip, while at the same time trying to take down the Magia or Maga or Maga or make America great again. <laughs> Whoever the fuck Maga. those mob guys are, you know. <laughs> So he's going to be taking them down, and it's kind of like it's going to be like a 20, 30 minute, like mini movie that's going to play in between the movies, stuff like that. And it's basically, you know, where that scene is going to go. So it's basically going to be the deleted scene on a movie, whatever, like that. So I thought that was, yeah, I'm cool. I don't, I don't mind the deleted scenes in the movie. Shit happens. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, shoot, anything else we got to talk about? Or? Um, I, I'm, I, I, I. I think we got it. I, I mean, got, I, I did I, another. I, yeah, this is my second go around with this. So. Right. I know you hit, <laughs> hit all your marks. Uh, last thing I want to say before we get out of here is uh, uh, a little nugget like Ned. You know, Ned had his girlfriend, Betty Brant. For those who don't know, Betty Brant was in the Sam Raimi movies. Uh, mm-hmm. She was played by Elizabeth Bank. That was uh, J. Jonah Jameson's secretary in the movie. For those that, you know, want to know when she came. So the blind chick, Elizabeth Bank, same character. Give this to the girl. Yeah, yes. give it that one. You know who she is, you know. Yeah. Uh, and also, Betty Brant and Ned are married in the comics, or were married in the comics. Yeah. So that was the thing, too. Becomes, well, that is, doesn't Ned become Hobgoblin at some point? Yeah, he does. So that's before he becomes a supervillain and all this shit like that. So the movie will probably completely ignore that shit. So. But are they? But is Ned actually gonna? Is that, is that what they're doing, or is, is he just Wait, you gotta remember, playing? We we've never heard Ned's last name. Yeah. So we don't even know if he's Ned Leeds. They just say yeah. Ned. Yeah. Or is he just supposed to be uh, a, co- a combination of him and, and Gank or Ganky? This or whole whatever. movie is Miles Morales. Peter Parker is white Miles Morales. Basic. That's what I was saying. That's what this is. This is, yeah. he, like I said, he doesn't act like Peter Parker from the comics. He acts like Miles Morales from the comics. Yeah. Like when, when, when you posted that shit about Peter's taste in women. Right. I'm like, well, that's that. They, instead of going straight up miles, this that's the closest thing they do. They made everybody else black and brown right. except Peter. Right. <laughs> like, <laughs> Flash, MJ, you know, <laughs> see, Ned. See, right. And see, I wasn't trying to go there, but if you want to go the white savior oh. route, it's right there, staring oh. you in the face. I'm just saying. Oh, I wasn't even going the white savior. I was just going. Hey, you know, wait, we're at the end of the podcast, no matter. I want that's why I didn't say it at the beginning. Yeah, I, I yeah, <laughs> so I, I still listen. It don't fucking matter. <laughs> that's why this whole that that that's another reason why I don't give a shit about the Little Mermaid, right? Because this is just like we talked about it before. This is just the idea of diversity. They right. like the idea of diversity, but, but it's, they it's don't all really believe mirrors, it. right? I mean, they don't really believe in it. Right. Yeah. And honestly, Eli, it's it's something we do have to bring up in these movies because you got to see because it does feel like in these movies, like his high school is checking off a box. Yeah, it's yeah. diversity, but you got yeah. one whatever the fuck Ned is Filipino, some shit. Yeah, Asian. You, you can never tell Filipino. They look Mexican, Filipino, <laughs> uh, Asian, and Native. You can't tell. Yeah, it's like. I'm sure they appreciate that, but yeah. Right. All my fault. All my Filipino listeners. I'm pretty sure we're big. Well, we were big in the yeah. Philippines. Y'all look the same to me. But not anymore. All, everybody in the Philippines now. Fuck this shit. Let's turn to comic cast. Uh, what you got? You got uh, two biracial chicks. Uh, now you got an Asian dude popped up out of nowhere. So now you got a new box in this one. Uh, whatever the fuck Flash Thompson is. Yeah. Uh, and- yeah. And Spider, but Spider Man's still white. Well, Spider Man's still white. That's the he's the main yeah. character. That's the thing. yeah, and that's like everybody. Yeah, let's we'll race change everybody else, but you still got the white lead. Exactly. You know? I mean, and, and, and yeah, Miles. Even in the Miles Morales movie, he was still backed by like three, four white spider people. Right. <laughs> to make everybody feel better, you know. Right. They're training him to tell him to get to their level. So yeah. 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 So it's like this whole Little Mermaid thing. Come on, we know this is them trying to cash in on Black Panther. That's all. I, w- I was just about to say that Black Panther. That's... The whole reason this shit is happening right now. Yeah, they saw oh, all the Black... money Black Panther made, so they're yeah. like, "Well, shit, let's just do that with Little Mermaid." Yeah, let's just you know, and if but and if but if Little Mermaid flops, we ain't seeing no Black Snow White. It's not gonna. It's not gonna happen, Eli. It's not gonna happen. I'm gonna tell you why. Now I know people are getting pissed about Little Mermaid, but remember how we were talking about Black Panther? How people were talking? About, oh, I gotta get my outfit. Oh, I gotta get ready. I'm already seeing it for Little Mermaid. I'm oh, already yeah. seeing. They haven't announced anything else. They're just saying we have to go support Little Mamie. No, the fuck we don't. 
Yeah, well, that, support this well, shit. Yeah, but my point is, this is all about money. Oh, it, it's, all, it's all about money. That's yeah, the only the diverse, color that Disney C is green. Yeah, yeah. As long as diversity sells, they they'll back it. Exactly. You know? But like I said, if for some reason the Little Mermaid flops, we they they ain't gonna make Snow White black, you know, or Cinderella <laughs> Mexican. Make, that's, 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 <laughs> Snow you know, black, Snow White. I don't know. <laughs> Snow black. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit but you know what i'm saying yeah I, that's why I like I, that's the, yeah I, I don't yeah whatever sure you know you know you got your thick pieces on you know on huffington post about oh marvel does this and marvel does that for diversity but eh, whatever right, but when you look <laughs> behind the scenes all this shit is smoking mirrors yeah you know everyone bitching about shit and you know they, they want yeah you know Hey, like, Fast like and the, the, Fast and the Furious up. movies make money. What did you expect? Right. <laughs> what did you expect <laughs> Disney, Disney to do? <laughs> right. <laughs> you know, they gotta get a bunch of colors. Movie. They got to sell this movie to everybody, you know? Yeah. yeah Disney's popping up. They, they're taking over the world. Hell, you I know? bet you they sell this movie over in China. Brad is probably on the poster. <laughs> Brad featuring Spider-Man. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Oh shoot. Have we scared off all our listeners yet? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, I think we did a good job of that. Uh what, what else we gotta talk about? I, I got nothing else. It's the, Hey, Spider Man's white, y'all. You know <laughs> For now. <laughs> at least, For now. At least Peter Parker's still white. <laughs> For now. <laughs> For now. <laughs> Miles Morales is coming. <laughs> You know, he did his, not get his, flipped his, out. He his, has a his kids, his kids might not be white. But, <laughs> <laughs> oh, but y'all can chill out. Spider Man is still white. <laughs> <laughs> you can rest. You can sleep at night believing that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right. Oh, so now when they kill him next movie, hey. <laughs> <laughs> and bring Miles Morales. Right. And shit. <laughs> oh shit. Oh shit. Oh uh, yeah, all right. So next week we'll have. I guess we go back to normal. Uh, everybody check out Geek Sad because we didn't talk about comics, but there is a big, big, big fucking thing that happened in comics. I know most people don't give a shit what happened in comics. This is a big thing, big thing that's happened for years. The last issue of The Walking Dead. Mm-hmm. That's it. That's it. They're done. Yeah, no they're more. done. Out of uh, the blue, all of a sudden they just dropped out it. Out of nowhere, off. they didn't announce it. They just said, "We're done." Out. Yeah. Right. Yep. Two so, days before the the comic came out, like, yeah, this is the last one. <laughs> yep. So, like I said, we're not gonna talk about it here because I don't read Walking Dead. I don't even know what the fuck Walking Dead is about. Eli knows that shit backwards and forward. Listen to Geek Sav. They're gonna break that shit down by the minutia. To At least I will, because I'll be the only one who have read it. But <laughs> you don't want to read comics. Okay? <laughs> so, but Eli will give you a full breakdown of that one. Oh, uh, and we we'll, next week we we'll just go back to normal. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so. Uh, I think we're going to go ahead and wrap this up uh, break this down I'm probably going to watch Spider-Man Far From Home again get a few issues from it I'm not going to rank my top Spider-Man movies because I'm going to let this sink in I'm going to let it sink in for a while and then give a rating later on because I think it's yeah. still fresh in my mind right now because I remember my first home watch at home coming I thought it was just okay mm-hmm. it wasn't until I saw it again you know, on, on when I got it on Blu-ray, that I was like, "Oh, I really like this movie." Yeah, it was so. the same with me. It got better the more <laughs> it, I watched. It, it grew on me. Yeah, it really yeah. grew on me. So, and so because I think I was comparing it to the older movies, and they were like, "No, appreciate it as its own movie." You know. Yeah. And so, yeah. yeah, let's go ahead and wrap this thing up. Uh, like I said, listen to us next week. We got some more shit for you. Listen to Geek Sav. This one, go listen to Geek Sav. Last week, because Eli has another uh, perspective on Spider-Man: Far From Home, and probably just from this, I didn't listen to it. Listen to both of it. You got two hours or whatever this is of Spider-Man to listen to from us. Until mm-hmm. then, this is Leroy. Z Life. And we'll talk to you guys next week. And same bully time, same bully channel. Cool.